Hope by XX Impressions. Chapter 4. The evening was warm as the light summer air breezed by. Dusk was just beginning to set while you walked the final steps towards the infamous bar. Dressed a little more savvily than usual, you hesitated a few feet shy of the entrance. Stopping in place, you bit your lip as you began to consider what might lay on the other side of the door. While those at 51 had seemed friendly at the firehouse the day before, a small part of you started to doubt if they had actually wanted to hang out with you off shift as you got closer to the bar. Giving a brief shake of your head as you allowed your anxieties to get the better of you, you turned in order to begin making the trek home. Only, you ended up crashing right into someone's chest as you did so. I am so sorry! You instantly exclaimed as you helped to stabilize yourself and the other person. Looking up once you were both steady, you found yourself stunned to be staring into a pair of familiar blue eyes. Lieutenant Saverhide, you said with surprise. Taking a necessary step back in order to give each of you some space, you continued by saying with a nervous chuckle, Please excuse me. Watching you with a smile, the lieutenant's tone was gentle as he responded with an easy shrug. All good. A small sense of tension began to build during the quiet moment in which you kept eye contact, and yet said nothing to one another. But that thankfully ended when the squad leader pointed towards Molly's and curiously asked, Are you heading in? Wanting to avoid his gaze as you realized you had been caught leaving early, you looked at the bar's sign instead as you flusteredly began to say in response, well, actually, I just remembered I have a lot of work to catch up on, so I don't think. But you allowed yourself to trail off once you'd returned your gaze to his and saw nothing but understanding in the depth of his eyes. With a small but knowing smile, the man across from you asked with kindness, Getting cold feet, huh? Blinking once at his ability to read the situation for what it was, you allowed the sheepishness to show on your face since you could only nod in response to his question. Recognizing this was probably an anxiety-induced decision, he reached out and placed one hand on your shoulder in order to turn you back around and said, Come on. I got your back, remember? You huffed out a laugh and were immediately filled with encouragement as you recalled giving him your appreciation for that same exact thing yesterday. Sending a genuine smile in his direction, he replied with, Thanks, Severhide. No problem was the response he gave as he walked you both up the steps. However, he paused before opening the door. Looking back to you, he added, But I wouldn't mind it if you called me Tally. While this was said with a casual shrug, it also had just a hint of shyness to it. You picked up on this only because you also noticed the hopeful expression on the lieutenant's face. Since your own expression had lit up at his words, you couldn't help but to reply in reciprocation. If that's the case, then I must insist you call me by my first name as well. Wearing a content grin that was similar to your own, Kelly nodded and said, Deal. Then opened the door to allow you inside. Once you crossed the threshold, you were immediately hit with the good vibes that emanated from within the bricked walls. It was like there was a coziness to the atmosphere that truly helped to create a sense of belonging throughout the place. Your eyes were still taking in your surroundings when, after following in behind you, Kelly put one guiding hand on your shoulder and raised his other while calling out, Hey! Look who I found outside! And within an instant, those present from 51 all raised their drinks in celebration and let out warm cheers as they caught sight of you. Surprised to receive such a welcome, you looked back at Severhide with an astonished brow raised on your face only for him to give you a smirk back that said, told you so. He began to lead you through the crowd as you waved high to all the firefighters and paramedics you were familiar with while you made your way to the bar. Upon giving your drink order to Herman, you once again had to give your gratitude to the man standing beside you once he had ordered and definitively said, First round's on me. With the kindness being shown from the squad lieutenant, you couldn't help but feel like you had finally made a friend in this city as he walked you over to a table full of people from 51. From there, you socialized and mingled. You listened and spoke. You asked questions and had some asked in return. Simply put, there were many great conversations had over the course of a few hours. 
You were currently in the middle of one such conversation since Matt had asked you what you planned to do once your contract was up, and now you were giving him your answer. I have a few more firehouses to finish shooting for the CFD project, so this won't be for a while, but I was thinking of getting my certification renewed to become a firefighter based here in Chicago. Really? Asked a surprised Casey from his position across from you. Really? You replied with excitement. After being out in the field yesterday, I realized I still have a hankering for it. So why not give it a try? You rhetorically finished. You got nods of understanding from around the table, but it was Kelly who vocalized his enthusiastic support from his place beside you. I say go for it. Looking his way as he continued, you watched as he said in earnest. There's nothing better in this world than being a smoke eater in my opinion. Feeling a sudden sense of camaraderie wash over, you picked up your drink as you said with pride. You know what? I'll raise a glass to that. And as those at the table followed your lead and shared a toast amongst themselves, you found that you were glad a certain someone had made sure you didn't miss out on all the fun tonight. End of chapter four.